Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers. You may have seen our previous best running shoes video where each of the Run Testers picks their three favorite shoes and talks through why that is. In this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna pick all of the shoes that we think are good enough to be classed as the best running shoes. That includes everything from daily trainers to cushion trainers all the way up to race day. And we've just thrown everything we all think should be classed as a best running shoe in this video. So there's 29 in total. Let's go straight in and see what we've got. Despite being a slightly older shoe, the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next% 2 is still one of our top picks for all out racing. If you look around the start corrals at any major marathon, you'll notice a sea of the Vaporfly 2. And despite the arrival of the Alpha Fly, these carbon plate races are still the go-to shoe for chasing PBs over half marathon distance. They're lighter and more agile than the Alpha, but still punchy when you run with good form and hit those higher paces. The change in uppers from Gen 1 to Gen 2 is also an improvement, and the Zoom X phone balances protection and response and works that foot long carbon plate to give you an ideal platform for running fast. These are shoes that make you feel race ready the moment you lace them on. The chunkier, pricier stablemate of the Vaporfly. The Alphafly uses the same springy Zoom X foam and a carbon plate but adds Nike's Air Zoom pods under the forefoot for a punchier toe off. The Alphafly is more of an acquired taste than the Vaporfly which seems to work for pretty much everyone but if you do click with the Alphafly it's a superb long distance racer in particular. Run tester Nick has it as his go-to half marathon and marathon racing shoe and ran 229 and 233 marathons in it this year. The Vaporfly is a little bit lighter and nimbler but the Alphafly helps you lock into a pace and cruise through those long events in more comfort while still being outrageously fast. The real downside here though is the price. At £270 you might well get more value by sticking with the Vaporfly or opting for the Metaspeed Sky or Adios Pro 2. For our third pick, we've got two racing shoes, both worthy of a place in the top spot, but for different reasons. The first is the ASICS Metaspeed Sky, one of, if not the closest carbon plate shoe experience to the Vaporfly and the Alphafly. The thick chunk of FF Blast Turbo midsole, combined with a full length plate, gives them a propulsive bounce that makes them a fantastic racer from 5k distance all the way up to marathon. The upper gives a comfortable and secure fit, while the midsole design manages to be slightly more stable than some other carbon plate super shoes. At £225, it's one of the more expensive options out there, but in this case, you get what you pay for. Our pick for a more budget-friendly carbon racer, the Adios Pro 2 are by no means cheap, but they're significantly less than Nike's flagship shoes. They're ideal if you're looking for a carbon shoe that's a little less chunky than an Alpha Fly, but still packs plenty of PB hunting punch. You get a stripped down racer with a big wedge of responsive Light Strike Pro foam and a Wolverine Claw split carbon plate that puts a rod under each metatarsal rather than a foot long plate. Now, despite being heavier than the Alpha Fly, the Adios Pro 2 runs lighter and more compact on the foot. It's nimble, agile, and punchy at pace, but despite a higher drop, that midsole cutout and a more pronounced lateral cutaway makes for a much less stable run overall. And this is a shoe that works best when you're running with your best form. Another shoe worth looking at in this category is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. It has a firmer, more stable ride than many Super shoes, but the combination of Saucony's P-Burr Power Run PB midsole and a full length carbon plate still makes for a propulsive feel and the speed roll technology in the midsole helps to produce an efficient ride. Then there's the Cloud Boom Echo, a lively carbon plate shoe that offers a smooth and fast ride and excels mainly at shorter events, being firmer than most Super shoes. We found it can handle anything up to half marathons well, and also protects the legs enough to use it for your fast training runs, but it might be a little too firm for most to enjoy for full marathons. At the other end of the scale is the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite 2, the most comfortable carbon shoe we've come across, but still exceptionally fast thanks to the bouncy fuel cell foam in the midsole. Nick picked up the biggest one of his life at the London Landmarks Half Marathon in the RC Elite 2, so it will forever be close to his heart. The Hocker Rocket X is a great value option at £140 that has a fast ride that's also comfortable enough to use for a lot of training, and it's been Mike's go-to option for 5k and 10k races this year. While the EVA midsole lacks the bouncy feel of many super shoes, the Rocket X is still impressively fast and smooth, and it's a great option for runners who don't want to splash out over £150 on a racing shoe. The Sorconi Endorphin Speed 2 is by far our most talked about shoe of 2021, much like the speed was before it. It can basically do anything from daily runs to race day efforts, thanks to the combination of the Power Run PB midsole foam and the full length carbon plate. The upper has an excellent lockdown fit and there's a healthy spattering of outsole rubber and the upper is thin and breathable. 
We were sent out to a desert island, one that had roads on it, and we were only allowed to take one pair of shoes. We'd all opt for the Speed 2. It's also worth noting that the updates made from the original Speed are minimal, so if you can get the Speed cheaper, it will save you some cash. The Hokamak 4 is a lightweight cruiser issue that's capable of handling an impressively wide range of training runs. It's a really comfortable shoe and Nick logged 20 milers in it during marathon training as well as a load of other easy and long runs, but it also has the pace to handle short interval sessions and your kind of tempo efforts. It doesn't quite have the pop of the Endorphin Speed 2, partly because it doesn't have any kind of plate in the midsole, but it's a little more cushioned and comfortable for those long and relaxed efforts when you are easing off the gas. The only real fly in the ointment here is that the exposed rubber outsole wears down faster than we'd really like in a daily trainer but you will at least love your runs in the shoe while it lasts. When it comes to the Saucony Ride 14, if you're after good, solid, reliable comfort and great versatility in a shoe that's built to last, this is it. Albeit in a more traditional design than some of the other high stack squishy daily trainers. But if you wanted to buy one shoe that would be good for training and racing up to a marathon, this would do the job. It's not as punchy or pillowy cushioned as some daily shoes, but it can cover everything from easy recovery runs right up to higher tempo training sessions, all at a price that's pretty competitive, and there's a lot to be said for that. With great stepping comfort and a disappearing feel on the foot, this 263 gram midweight daily trainer screams reliable comfort and performance for those easy to mid intensity miles. The big midsole stack of Fresh Foam X is slightly firmer than some big cushion shoes, but strikes a great balance between soft landings and energy saving response. The one piece mesh upper makes for a sock like snugness that feels supportive, but also leaves plenty of wiggle room for your toes. This is one of those versatile shoes you're always happy to lace up. The Velocity Nitro has been talked about by the run testers on hundreds of occasions. It's a great all-rounder that ticks a lot of boxes, from comfort and cushioning to having the versatility to be used for a range of training efforts. The biggest plus point of the shoe is however the price and can often be found around £50 from various retailers. The Nova Blast was one of the most popular shoes for daily training when it was released, but the high stack of FF Turbo midsole foam meant it was very unstable. The Nova Blast 2 fixes that stability to an extent making it a better all-round option for general running even up to race day, although the update has made the foam slightly less bouncy. The Velocity Wind is less cushioned than some of the other options in this list and is a big winner for Mike and Kieran. It's a good choice for those who want something more minimal but don't want to go all the way, and the lean design makes them a good choice for faster training and race day. They also have built-in technology that links to the Map My Run app to give data on your run without the need for a watch. The Rebel V2 is a light, fun and bouncy option for daily runs that has a similar feel to New Balance's carbon shoe, just without the pop of a carbon plate. It's very versatile with the fuel cell midsole providing a comfortable but speedy ride, though we did find at times that a lack of plate meant it started to lose some of its pop on longer fast runs. The Brooks Glycerin line has long been a favourite of ours for cushioned and comfortable miles. The DNA Loft midsole foam used in the most recent versions has a great balance of cushioning without feeling too soft, which means the shoe can pick up the pace when it needs to. The traditional upper design has a nice level of cushioning which makes them comfortable from the first time you step in them, and there's a healthy level of outsole rubber to ensure you'll be running in the shoes for many miles. The On Cloud Fire is a cushioned shoe that has a sprinkling of support. That subtle amount of stability built into it is barely even noticeable but when you're clocking up the miles, it helps to promote a comfortable and smooth feel, especially combined with Ons Helion foam cushioning. The result is a versatile shoe that excels over many miles of training when you want a reliable workhorse. Great for casual runs and easy recovery efforts, this second gen update of Nike's popular everyday training shoe comes with the same soft and responsive React midsole foam and a wide base that gives stable and cushioned landings. A new fly knit mesh upper and a padded tongue and heel also improves the all-round comfort and lockdown fit. They're plush, roomy and flexible, though at a heavier 302 grams, need the best laced up for slower miles and those exploratory ambles where you're running with little time-focused intent. Triumph Line has been a favourite of ours for a long time, with Nick frequently singing the praises of this shoe. The 19 continues that trend with a Crusader shoe that has loads of cushioning, but still feels fast when you need it to be. This is definitely our favourite heavily cushioned shoe from Saucony. If you want ultimate softness in your daily shoe, then the Nike Invincible is the one to go for. The midsole was made entirely from the same Zoom X foam used in the Vaporfly, which means it's extremely soft and still has a lot of bounce. The main downside to using that foam is stability and the shoe can feel a bit wobbly. Like all of Skechers shoes, the Max Road 5 has great cushion to weight ratio, being light on the foot despite the chunky stack of nitrogen infused EVA in the midsole. 
The responsive feel of the foam combined with the shoe's rocker mean that the Match Road offers a speedier feel than most easy shoes, making it a little more versatile. We've already waxed lyrical about the versatility of the Endorphin Speed 2 as a daily trainer, but the fact that it does skew slightly towards speedier stuff makes it even more capable as a shoe you can use on race day as well as in your training. The fact that it's also a little comfier than the Endorphin Pro 2 might even make the speed a better pick for half and full marathons for many people. And it also has the pace for short events, with Nick using the speed for a couple of 5Ks in the past year. To show off its versatility once again, on the same day as one of those 5Ks, Nick took the speed out for an hour long recovery run. There really aren't many shoes that are so capable of handling both of those runs on the same day. Tom's absolute favourite running shoe of all time, the Fuel Cell TC is a rare case of a full carbon plate being used in a daily trainer. The result is an experience that's very similar to what you'll find in something like the Vaporfly or the A6 Metaseed Sky. Bouncy, propulsive and perfect for running faster training miles or even races. The similarity with those super shoes also means that it is quite wobbly though, which may be an issue for those runners that want a more stable ride. Thanks to the high stack of fuel cell foam in its midsole, the Rebel V2 has a similar feel to New Balance's carbon plate running shoes like, like the Fuel Cell TC and RC Elite. It's not quite as fast and purposeful as those shoes, uh, but it is a little bit more versatile in terms of handling all your training runs well, including easy and recovery runs. It also does provide a light and bouncy ride when you are pushing hard in speed sessions and races. It's probably better suited to short events if you are racing though, with the Speed 2 and Mac impressing us more as options for half marathon and marathon events, just because the lack of a plate and the kind of very soft foam in the Rebel 2 means that it bottoms out a little bit when pushing past around 10 miles. At Sketch's lightweight hyperburst midsole is the star of the show here, providing a ride with plenty of pop that's still pretty comfortable on easy runs. The Razor XS has a firmer feel than some of the other all-rounder picks, and the low drops might not suit everyone, but it's a terrific fast training shoe that we also rate as a good racing option for all distances up to a marathon. The Brooks Hyperion Tempo is a firmer option that has more traditional feel than shoes with very springy foams and plates. That'll appeal to runners who haven't bought into the recent revolution in shoe design. The Tempo is a good racing option for short and long events alike, and you'll also enjoy racking up the training miles in it too if you do prefer a firmer shoe in general. Now the Rincon Dynasty has found a winning formula of a light, cushioned, versatile ride and largely stuck with it from generation to generation. In the 3 you still get that high stack of midsole foam, Hoka's trademark rocker and a light mesh upper that creates a run long, run fairly fast or run easy ride that's firm with good ground contact. The price is also really compelling. The only real question marks over the Rincon are the durability of that midsole foam and the toe box that some do find narrow. The Puma Velocity Nitro may have an RRP at £100, but it's been available for much less than that from very soon after it was launched. At around £50 on some sites, it's an absolute steal and can easily give shoes that cost well over twice that a run for their money, for comfort, versatility and grip. That makes it perfect for anyone, from beginners who don't want to invest in more expensive shoes straight away, to people who want a cheaper workhorse daily trainer to save the durability of their more expensive shoes, or basically just anyone on a tight budget. The Float Ride Energy 3 is a very capable all-round running shoe for £75, and it's actually very often available for less than that RRP in sales as well. The shoe has a generous stack of cushioning, and although it's not a particularly lively ride, it doesn't feel heavy on the foot and it's a solid option for a range of training runs. It's really best suited for eating up your kind of easy mileage though, and the outsole grips well in all conditions, all of which makes the Energy 3 a great cheap option for rounding out your rotation to handle all your base runs in all conditions, while you save your pricier, perhaps more exciting shoes for speed days, long runs and races. Another shoe from Puma's range that offers exceptional value at £90, the Liberate Nitro is an absolute joy to run in with a very light and flexible design that provides a little bounce whilst also giving you great feel for the ground. It's a fast shoe that's really fun to use for interval sessions and it can also handle shorter races. It also offers really good grip thanks to the Puma Grip outsole. In general we found it's less good for longer runs when you're kind of pushing past an hour when we prefer the more cushioned and structured Velocity Nitro, and Nick had some minor heel rub issues with the Liberate on long runs, but if you're generally heading out for kind of 5k and 10k in your daily training or want a fun, lively shoe to do it in, the Liberate is a top option. Brooks Launch is a very underrated shoe all round. It might not have the most exciting foam in the midsole, but the EVA material used provides a comfortable yet still quick ride that makes the launch a solid all rounder pick at a very good price. So that's it from our massive guide of 29 shoes that we love testing out this year. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. It really does make a difference. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as headphones and watches out at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching. 
See you next time.